Jason Carthen, and we have a wonderful guest with us today, Yasmin Suri. Suri, it's good to meet you. Today. Great to meet you, too. Thank Absolutely. you. Thank you for joining us today. Thanks for well, having me. Yasmin, I, I wanted to ask you, you know, when we think about artists and some of the different things that they bring to the table, especially when they're praising the Lord, how did you know that you were gifted in music and song? I really didn't know because I wasn't raised in the church. So when I became a Christian and I um, I started seeking the Lord and just worshiping Him quietly, uh, I would want songs to be sung that I would hear on the radio from other artists. And I would go to my church and tell them, can you please sing these songs? And I remember one night the Lord asked me to do it. So I was kind of shocked and, and I I didn't really know how to sing. I didn't have that, that natural ability. Mm -hmm. And so the Lord connected me um, a few years later with the Clark sisters out of Detroit, mm -hmm. and they actually trained me to sing in gospel music. Excellent. Yeah, for four years. So that was that was a blessing in itself. Wow. Yes. Now, Yasmin, you mentioned Detroit. Where are you from? Where are you from originally? I'm originally from India. I was born in India, and I came to the United States when I was almost five years old. Okay. And... Um, I was basically raised and Americanized in this culture, even though we still held on to our traditional uh, Indian heritage and, and the way we dress and different things that we do and food. And mm -hmm. um, But other than that, I was basically just raised in the U.S. Excellent. Excellent. My goodness. So what do you what do you do now? I basically sing and I speak and that's basically that's my calling is to share the gospel with the unbelievers and even with believers that are in the body of Christ that are practicing things that are not um, that are not safe, you know, from, safe. from the Indian culture. Okay. And so I share a lot of, of my testimony. I, I love sharing the gospel with people. I love sharing my faith. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I'm in a personal revival. So, really? Yes, I am. I'm just on fire for God. And, Amen. And I believe that God is, is just using each one of us that are available to him. Mm -hmm. That are open to be used by him. That is, that is yes. awesome. Well, share with us, share with our viewers a little bit just about your testimony. How did you come to know the Lord? What was that like? Well, when I was younger, I was raised, my family, they were in the Sikh religion, which mm -hmm. is uh, partial Hindu beliefs and partial Islam. Mm -hmm. And so... As I was growing up, I would begin uh, to have spiritual experiences, and I thought they were part of God, but it was actually Satan revealing himself to me as, and coming in as an angel of light. Mm. So in our homes, we would have books on palm reading and, and karma and reincarnation and um, creative visualization and meditation. And so I thought all these things were part of God. Mm. And so I would actually start practicing those things as a child, and I would... I would actually have gifts where I could have out-of-body experiences, where I could really? read people's minds, and things would come to pass. And and I had no idea where this is coming from. I always thought it was a part of God. And so through my teenage years, through mm -hmm. my adult life, part of my adult life, I had no idea that that Satan was coming in to deceive me this whole time. Mm. And so that's what had happened to me until the moment that Jesus started coming after me. Wow. And so when Jesus started coming after me, he, um, he started showing me that the, the light that I had seen, because Satan masquerades as an angel of light, mm -hmm. and he deceives us in a way that where we can't see the truth, because there's a veil that's put over our minds that we can't discern what is evil and what is good. And so... What had happened is when the Lord started reaching out for me, I responded and the light became darker. And instead of uh, the ghosts or, or spirit beings appearing as light and angelic, mm -hmm. they became very demonic. Really? Yeah. Demonic. And they became grotesque and then they would start tormenting me. Mm -hmm. And so when the torment started coming, I had no way to be delivered. I had no one to go to and my mom would take me to... Uh, psychologists or counselors mm -hmm. and they thought I was doing drugs or oh or something was happening but the truth of the matter is the generational curses were, were passed down to me from my father and my forefathers because God says that the sins of your fathers and forefathers will be passed down 
from three and four generations mm -hmm. into your children. Mm -hmm. So I had inherited the sins of my family and the witchcraft that they were practicing. And so when I actually got saved, or, or close to getting saved, even mm -hmm. before I got saved, close to getting saved, I, um, I started, I, the only one that I could call on was Jesus to deliver me. Amen. Because people had told me about this Savior and this Messiah mm -hmm. and, and, this, and my sins that I had to face a holy God, I didn't know until someone told me about Jesus. And it wasn't until my 20s that someone actually told me that Jesus died on the cross for your sins. Praise God. Praise God. How has your life been different after that? I mean, what what's taking place now after coming to know the Lord? Well, the night that I got saved, um, God re removed. There was like a veil that was placed over my mind mm -hmm. and over my eyes that I couldn't see good and evil. And the night that I got saved, the next morning, um, he lifted the veil and I could actually discern. I, I would turn on the TV or drive down the street and I could tell the difference between what is ungodly and mm -hmm. what is godly immediately. Wow. And so um, I started, I just began to be on fire for God. I started reading his word. I started getting the scripture in me and he started sanctifying me and delivering me from things that, that I had from my past. Mm -hmm. And I had to go through a re repentance of the sins that I'd committed. Mm. And, you know, and I also had to get rid of a lot of the things that I had in my home, you sure. know, like the alcohol and and certain clothes that I couldn't wear anymore, mm. and uh, jewelry that was occultic jewelry, okay. and my music, I had to get rid of all my music, and, and everything that exemplified or glorified lust and rebellion, and, and God just had me totally clean up my house. Amen, so it sounds like you were a new creation after that, I, <laughs> the I, Bible tells us. I literally had a transformation, Amen. a real encounter with God. Yes, man, that is wonderful. What were some of the challenges that you experienced? Because you expressed that, you know, this was your family's faith. I mean, the Sikh religion, I mean, it's, it's very ingrained in that way. So how were you able to move away from that? What were some of the challenges associated with it? Well, I was so excited to be a Christian and to mm -hmm. be saved and have that weight of sin lifted from me that mm -hmm. I told everybody in my family. I okay. told my friends, I didn't care how they felt, you know, <laughs> at the moment. I was just so happy. I wanted to tell them about Jesus. You were on fire. I was yeah. on fire for God. Mm -hmm. And so, but it was after the fact when, when they wanted me to go to their temples or there was um, an event or a funeral or a wedding mm -hmm. or uh, some kind of party that was going on that they wanted me to partake in their their, their Sikh temples mm. and I wouldn't go. Wow. And when, when that kind of stuff started happening, um, it was difficult for my family to understand that I couldn't take a little bit of this religion and a little bit of that religion and put them together that I actually cut out everything right. and, wow. and rejected the entire, um, teaching of the Sikh or, or Eastern mysticism and that I would have nothing to do with the unfruitful works of darkness. Amen. And so some family members, I couldn't even say the name Jesus in my house or in their house around them. Really? Yeah. So, um, and they would make fun of me. I mean, they, mm -hmm. you know, some of them still do and they laugh, but they just don't know what they're doing. Right. You know, right. they're, they're blinded by the enemy and I don't take it personal. Mm -hmm. You know, if they hated Jesus, they're going to hate me. But it's so the spirit true. that they hate in me. That's it's the not thing. me. That is the thing. But we have to love our family. Absolutely. You know, we have to love them unconditionally and pray for them. And if you demonstrate your love, Christ Jesus, and you walk it out, then maybe they'll see that and they'll understand, wow, despite us um, making jokes or mocking,